if somebody accepts you for who you are, then you belong. If somebody forces you to be like them, then you're just fitting in, right? So it's kind of one of those things where I would like to see us move to that type of that type of society where everybody feels that they belong and that they don't just have to fit in in order to be accepted. Welcome to Some Stutter Law, a podcast by the uh, C- Communication Collaborative. Some Stutter Law is Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about living with communication disorders. We speak directly to people living with speech and language disorders and others such as speech language pathologists, researchers, educators, and family members. We used inclusive language and themes to help rebuild confidence and hope by dismantling myths, stigmas, stereotypes, and barriers. My name is Greg O'Grady, and I'm a person who stutters and a co-host of Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland Labrador's first podcast about communication disorders, along with my co-host. And I'm Caitlin Mayo. I'm a speech-language pathology student, and I'm Greg's co-host on this podcast. Some Stutter Law mission is dismantling and rebuilding communication disorders. Let's start listening. Some Stutter Law mandate is in the spirit of Newfoundland and Labrador humor, robust and frank interactive discussions. Some Stutter Law podcast aims to rebuild confidence and hope for people who live with communication disorders by dismantling myths, stigma, stereotypes, and barriers. The objectives of Some Stutter Law podcast are raising awareness, education, understanding, and acceptance of communication disorders by providing support, current information, research, and resources, acknowledging that communication disorders are a quality of life issue. Throughout life, stuttering and other communication challenges can impact a person's life emotionally, educationally, physically, socially, and vocationally. Some Stutter Law is committed to creating a safe space where guests can be themselves without fear of being judged. Today, uh, some uh, some Stutter Law welcomes Angie Power. And, and uh, Angie is a co-founder of the Newfoundland Labrador Stuttering Association, NLSA, is on the NLSA Board of Directors, and is a current is a current NLSA treasurer. Andrea does not stutter. She has become a courageous ally of people who stutter in our province. I say courageous because it takes a lot of courage to well, to become an ally for a marginalized and an and an underrepresented community in our province. I applaud and thank Andrea for voluntarily picking up the torch to become an ally for people who stutter, our families, and for others with communication challenges. On behalf of the Newfoundland Labrador Stuttering Association, Some Stutter Law, and, and the stuttering community, thank you. Andrew, you are our first official ally guest interview on Some Stutter Law. Let us welcome Andrea Power to Some Stutter Law. So thank, thank you very much for joining us, Andrea. And uh, 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 Andrea, could you share with our listeners a little about yourself and how you became involved in the stuttering community? Sure. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. I was quite honored to be invited to um, the Some Stutter Lot podcast as a guest because I visit you guys regularly. <laughs> uh, I've listened to quite uh, quite a lot of the uh, podcasts and I just love them. They're not only educational, but really inspiring. So um, keep up the great work. Uh, again, thank you for having me. I'm really honored and touched that you would invite me. Um, so I guess a little bit about how I got involved. Um, when I was serving on council in Mount Pearl, um, I was invited to attend the first walk run that was held that uh, Greg and his cohorts organized uh, in cooperation with uh, Nalasapa. And it was uh, 
it was a great event. I, I guess I should start by saying I love volunteering. Um, I've been a, a lifelong volunteer since I was a kid and I really enjoy, um, just the collaboration and the fact that when you're volunteering, you are there, um, willingly and, you know, graciously, <laughs> nobody, nobody's really, um, you know, paying you to be there. Most volunteers do it out of the kindness of their heart. And, uh, I get, uh, I, I'm really uplifted by that. So, um, when I attended that first event, you could feel that in, um, all of the volunteers that were there that day who were largely part of, um, Greg's circle, close circle of, uh, family and friends and supporters. And, uh, I instantly became connected. We had, uh, there were some mutual friends there, Greg, if you recall, um, uh, with, uh, some family members and, and some volunteers that I knew as well who uh, live in, in Mount Pearl. So it was, uh, it was very comfortable that first, that first event. And it was shortly after that event. Uh, I think Greg and I sort of hit it off that day and I was invited to attend a meeting. Um, Greg was very passionate about trying to organize a, a group of individuals who would like to start um, the the cause for uh, beginning the Newfoundland and Labrador Stuttering Association. So um, together we we made it happen, and that was wonderful. So I guess that's sort of where things started for me with the Newfoundland and Labrador Stuttering Association, and it's been um, a wonderful three plus years now. So we're, we're certainly going strong and making great strides. And, um, I'm so impressed by every day by how much we managed to accomplish with our little small group. So <laughs> you've got me for a while yet, Greg, for sure. <laughs> well, that, that, that's great to hear, Andrew. It really is great to hear. And, and, and Andrew, there, you know, there, you know, there, you know, there is, you know, there is a great deal of written information available about being an ally. From your perspective, as a non-person who stutters, what, you know, what, 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 you know, what is your definition of an ally? I guess for me personally, um, it would be to believe that everybody should be treated fairly and equally, um, you know, in a world where we're experiencing um, so much, I guess, attention to diversity and differences and the uniqueness of individuals. I think it's important to embrace that. So I think that every person, regardless of their background or um, you know, in particular, if they have a communication um, disorder or uh, a speech, um, I guess, issue, it's about education and understanding. And for me, that's that's why I guess I enjoy learning about so many different. Um, so many, so many different people and their backgrounds and their journeys, I guess, up until now. Um, I think that every single person deserves respect and they deserve to have the same opportunities as, as anyone else. So for me, that's what being an ally is. Um, it's being supportive in general. And I think the more you learn about that, particular person and the cause that you're supporting you then develop an empathy and you you can't help but um i guess continue to want to you know carry the torch with that person and really support those various causes and for me that's that's what happened that first day when i learned so much about stuttering that I had never been exposed to, um, you know, throughout my life. So for me, I guess, you know, and you helped me be an ally, Greg. 
as as an ally what do you you know you feel are some of the challenges facing people who stutter and and, and our families currently in our province and uh, as you know as an advocate how would you advocate i think what what surprised me the most when i started my journey with the newfoundland Labrador stuttering association was the um lack of awareness i guess and accessibility to resources um it's funny because a lot of people that um know that i'm part of the newfoundland Labrador stuttering association I will have conversations with them about the fact that, you know, growing up, they didn't really know a lot of people who stuttered. Um, but there were a lot of very quiet people that they grew up with. And knowing what I know now about covert stutterers, it makes me think that um, it's quite likely that we all grew up with someone who stuttered but they simply chose not to do that publicly. So they were, you know, quiet individuals or, um, you know, in a very, I guess, safe environment would only allow that part of themselves to be seen. And I just think that with um, the resources that we've tried to tap into in Newfoundland and um, after working with, you know, like-minded organizations, we're really lacking in that department of education and awareness. Um, I think that the Newfoundland Labrador Southern Association is a huge step in trying to move us towards, you know, some sort of collaboration with those bodies that can help us with and I mean this is like this podcast is you know second to none in terms of trying to get the word out a little bit more and trying to help with I guess understanding and awareness education and also reaching those people who may have up until now been reluctant to reach out for you know assistance for either themselves or a family member um so yeah i i definitely think we we need a little bit more on the uh the education piece and access to resources for sure andrew when you know when you're t t talking to your acquaintances and friends about stuttering what, what, what is their normal reaction i mean you know like do they feel that they you know they you know that that, that they're ill ill-informed and or you know have, have, have do do they share if, if they have any families or friends that stutter what's what's the what's the reaction i i think the general reaction is that most people that i talk to can't really name one person that they know who i guess is a, a confirmed person who stutters um you know and um even myself growing up i don't think that i could pinpoint one person who i know personally um but i do know lots of people who were reluctant to you know speak up uh in class even as a young child um or who would shy away from doing anything publicly um, in terms of, you know, public speaking or anything like that. And I don't know if that was, you know, had a lot to do with um, just not having that confidence because it wasn't talked about. Um, and I, I think that the more we normalize communication, um, I guess, barriers, um, and in particular, um, you know, people who stutter 
and their, I guess, right to be able to do that in a comfortable and safe place, um, it's going to take some time for us to get there. But I think we are, I think in this world of, like I said, accepting people's differences and diversity, uh, diversity matters so much. Um, there's so much more awareness now than there was, you know, even 10 years ago that I think we're on the right path. And I'm just wondering, Andrea, before you started, or before you met Greg, before you started working with the NLSA, how much did you know about stuttering? I can't say that I knew a lot about it from a personal point of view. Um, I understood that, you know, stuttering was, um, I guess, you know, it's been labeled as so many different things over the years, you know, a speech impediment, <clears throat> um, communication barrier. Um, and it was always the same myths, I guess, you know, just, you know, slow down and breathe and you're talking too fast or you're thinking, you know, and, and things of that nature. So when I started learning so much through the NLSA, um, it just, it opened my mind to this whole new world. And I guess I was always sort of questioning the acceptance piece, like in the back of my mind, it's, it's like that part sort of clicked with me, which is probably why I, you know, became so supportive of the NLSA and, and its mission. Um, I don't think that people should have to change who they are. You shouldn't have to be, you shouldn't have to try to um, fit in to belong. And there's, there's actually a, a great quote and I read it in a Brene Brown book. I don't know if you guys uh, follow or read much on Brene Brown, but uh, I've been reading a lot of her a lot of her material uh, since COVID started. <laughs> um, she's quite inspiring. And part of her research is about um, fitting in and belonging. And one of the definitions that she came up with from the data was that I fit, I, to fit in, I have to be like you. But to belong, I have to be like me, right? So if somebody accepts you for who you are, then you belong. If somebody forces you to be like them, then you're just fitting in, right? So it's kind of one of those things where I would like to see us move to that type of, that type of society where everybody feels that they belong and that they don't just have to fit in in order to be accepted. I don't know if I answered your question, Caitlin. <laughs> I guess that was kind of a roundabout way of doing that. <laughs> well, and, and, and Andrew, what are some, you know, some other specific areas about stuttering? that you feel that, that you know that you need to learn and and um, understand oh my lord so much greg <laughs> so much um i think i really think i would like to see more data and i i have a science degree caitlin so i'm very data driven <laughs> and i understand data I think Greg already knows that about me. Um, but I think I would like to see more data on, um, I guess, the long-term effects that, um, you know, not offering support and early intervention to people who stutter, especially young children at an early age, to to really see what that can trend, um, 
I guess, translate to, you know, later in life. And I think that that's where we really need to start um, focusing our attention because I think if we can get children to accept who they are and if we can get others to accept who they are from a very early age, then they they will become they will feel like they belong from you know as young as possible and then they will live a more fulfilled life you know um with that sense of belonging i think that it's it's very unfortunate that um and we like i've read so much about you know um how children didn't realize they had a stutter until somebody pointed it out to them right and it was like a life-changing moment for them because then they just stopped talking because if they didn't feel comfortable um because to them it was just who they were and if somebody you know it's like when somebody makes fun of a kid for you know a birthmark or something like that right something that they're born with um that's you know visually um seen and their family members have seen this their entire life but then they're say they go they go to school and and it becomes a you know a difference that's picked up on by other children and then all of a sudden they're whole world changes because okay now I'm different and I and I don't fit in and are they going to accept me and you know things like that so I really I'd like to see a little bit more effort I guess you know at at the early early stages of of childhood and not in not in the way it used to be 30 years ago where you know children would try to be fixed or cured of their stutter just the the acceptance of it and you know this is uh this is part of who you are and you should you should be proud of who you are you know as a as a person who 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 uh, stutters with you know with you know with you know with the many you know many years of lived lived experience as as a person who stutters you know, you know, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I find that uh, since, you know, since it is, since I've become involved with the, the, uh, the uh, NLSA, some stud a lot. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm really surprised as well how much I'm learning about stuttering. It's, a, it's amazing the, 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 you know, the, the information, and the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the aha moments that I've gained, you know, since, since involvement. And uh, so, so uh, you know, uh, you know, I find that you know, uh, when I was sort of you know working, you know, you know, you know, I was so focused on the the career, you know, building a career, and uh, just you know, and you know, so I spent a lot of my time being you know being being a, a covert person who stutters, and so so when you know when you're Part of the the uh, the drama of 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 of, 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 of you know k- k- keeping your head down, uh, 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 trying to do a good job. Plus, uh, I just sort of you don't really have have time to really sort of explore exactly what what what, what the cause of the stuttering stuttering is, and there's but you know but but but, but uh, you know I feel it it is so you know. So important for for all people who stutter to to try to get off this thread mail and 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 start you know, start looking at one's behavior and what's behind your behaviors decisions and so so unfortunately unfortunately a lot of it is interrelated to stuttering you know so so as I was saying that so after after all these you 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 know you you know you, you know years of uh, of of being a person who stutters I'm finding now that the more that, uh, that you know that you know the more that I reflect, I realize how something has affected my life, you know. So, but it's it's so important for people started to really sort of take advantage of support groups, these podcasts, attend conferences, things like that, you know. 
and uh, we and we also part of the NLSA. <laughs> yes, we're always accepting members. That's true. So, so, and uh, Andrew, what advice would you know would you give to someone who you know who, you know who who is considering becoming an ally of a person who stutters? What, what advice? Oh my goodness. Um, I think it's just it's to be open um, and really try to yeah go in with an open mind and educate yourself um, on you know the the data there's so much there's so much information out there um, and I I guess my biggest piece of advice would be to research the myths first get rid of all the myths that are in your head <laughs> surrounding stuttering and um and then work up from there i think if you really want to understand um and you know have some compassion and empathy for people who stutter and their families i think that absorbing every bit of knowledge that you possibly can about um, the the falsities that surround stuttering and what we have believed to be true you know from the early days and what now in in today's world of stutterers is actually um, true and and we're what's being done to try to correct or I guess dispel those myths you know um, because a, a lot of times we forget that I'll use the iceberg analogy Greg <laughs> we forget that there's so much um, under under the water that can be really, really difficult to um, for people who stutter to bring to the surface. And I think the more people who um, simply offer support versus um, a solution <laughs> to you know somebody's stutter. Um, it's more, it's more of a question of what do you need from me as an ally versus what can I do for you as a person who stutters? I think, I think it's, it's that communication that needs to happen. Um, and I, I was <laughs> in the beginning, I was really, I won't say reluctant because I, I felt like from that first event that I attended that um, I really wanted to learn more about stuttering and people who stutter. Um, but I was a little bit intimidated because I didn't know a lot at that time. And uh, I still have a lot to learn, but I've learned a lot in the last number of years. So that would be my number one piece of advice. Absorb as much information as you can and start with start with the myths and, and get those out of your head. <laughs> for a uh, for a uh, non you know a non person who stutters, you you know you you know you you, know, you mentioned the, the you know the iceberg and uh, 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 Analogy, and uh, so, so you know when you know when when you know when a person who stutters or, or, or you know you know so you know while while unfortunately uh, you know many people that stutter are, 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 are very nervous talking to public, uh, talking you know talking to strangers, and we you know we you know we sort of you know all, you know we often let you know let one's you know fa you know facial expression. You know, throw us off, make us more anxious, because I mean, 
often the facial expressions, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't often that, that pleasant. So, Andrea, as, as, as an ally, an, an ally what, what would you, you know, what advice would you give, you know, the, the, the you know, the normal uh, uh, public about, you know, how to, how to, you know, react to, to you know, to a person that stutters, who, who, who is, you know, presents as very nervous, very anxious and everything, and uh, we, you know, we also know that it, it, stuttering presents it presents in in various forms like the blocking, the repetitions, the prolongation. So, so what you know, what advice would you know would you give someone who who is not is you know is isn't aware of 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 how to react to a person who stutters? I think I think that it's just you know. Think about treating a person who stutters the same way that you would treat anybody else, and that that's you know with respect first and foremost. So, if you're questioning whether or not somebody, if you don't know that somebody is a person who stutters, and they're having trouble with speaking or getting their words out simply allow them the time to do that <laughs> I, I think that's like that's the you know and it, it might be difficult and it might feel uncomfortable um, but it's it's no it's definitely not any more comfortable than the person who stutters is having in that moment <laughs> so so I guess you know patience and um, and trying to keep, um, you know, that person's gaze, you know, they may look away, but try not to, you know, try not to look away because you feel that you're in an uncomfortable situation. And that can be difficult. Uh, I appreciate that. But when you allow somebody the space to actually get their words out and because the thoughts, as we know, are already there. It's just trying to get them to get them to come out, right? Um, so I think offering them that time and space and respect is is what I would suggest. Um, and I know that we live in a world that operates in you know high speed everything, <laughs> but. Um, Sometimes just taking those few extra moments to slow down means the world to another person. And I think we could all use that these days. <laughs> when when uh, someone asks you, Andrea, to, uh, to, uh, to, to explain or define, you know, what, you know, what is stuttering? What, you know, what is your normal answer what you know because a few people often ask me as well greg you know what you know what you know what is stuttering and uh, so you know some you know and and just to explain what stuttering is is a bit of a challenge for somebody um who does you know doesn't know like have 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 you been asked that question and if so how how, how have you responded uh i have i've been asked that question a lot um and, you know, if I'm having a frank discussion with a very close friend of mine, um, I might be a little more direct in my <laughs> explanation and, you know, say, well, I'm sure there's a definition somewhere out there if you really want to see how it's defined. <laughs> um, but in terms of, you know, everyday life, I just explain that, you know, it's, it's, um, can be just the, the emotional and psychological um, blocks that create the actual physical stutter. So stuttering, in my opinion, is very complicated and can't really be described, you know, in in a quick, I guess, you know, in a quick couple of lines. Um, but I think 
more important than defining stuttering. It's trying to explain to people how to react to a person who stutters, right? Because there could be a variety of reasons why somebody stutters. Um, and we can't, uh, I guess, suppose to know, you know, what each individual person that you encounter who stutters, um, what the reasons are. Um, and we likely will never know <laughs> the, the direct causes, you know. Um, but I think um, when people ask me about stuttering and, and how I became involved, uh, with the group, I just tell them it's because I think the world needs more empathy and compassion. And especially in when it comes to our communication with each other. I think that we've, we've lost that, you know, people are in the whole world of, um, you know, smartphones and technology and endless binging of Netflix and, <laughs> and, uh, COVID and, and things of that nature. It's communication is, is more important than ever. And when you become a great communicator, whether it's talking yourself or taking the time to listen to somebody, I think that's what benefits people who stutter the most is offering them a place to communicate regardless of, you know, any barriers that they feel that they might have. If somebody feels safe, they're going to, they're going to talk. Right. So I think offering that safe, that safe place. And that's what I try to tell people who don't really understand, you know, what, what stuttering is all about and um it's just it's just you know educating yourself and learning more and and because that's what it's been for me right so as somebody who didn't grow up with you know a family member who stuttered or um anybody who's had any sort of um i guess communication barriers um, it's for me, it's more about like what I can do to, I guess, better myself in terms of understanding and knowing how I should react, right? Because really, at the end of the day, that's all we can control, right? Is how we react to something. So. Yeah. Now, uh, this you know, this is is a sixty-four dollar question for both you and Caitlin to answer. And uh, so, you know, um, and and, and uh, this you know, that this can also be a question for our listening audience for future. Uh, 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 you know, some sort of law ep episodes. Uh, so, uh, Caitlin, as a, 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 as a student currently enrolled in the speech language, language pathology program, and also as as a person who studies ally, because Caitlin is also a definite ally for people who stutter, and Andrea as an ally. You, you know, you you know, you both uh, uh, know that stuttering is quite fluid. We have our good days and bad days. So you know, so at times you know, you both have heard me, have, have, have you know, have have heard my own stutter be quite fluid, good and bad periods. Uh, during my my you know my periods of disfluency, can you both describe your your comfort levels? And uh, what you know, uh, like in, in these periods when I'm having some 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 challenges, which is often uh, depending how 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 I'm feeling, uh, what you know, what, what you know, what, what things uh, uh, 
go 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 through your minds. What things are are, are you thinking? Uh, do you know, do you have questions? You know that uh, automatically come to your mind, or is there anything you feel that you should be doing to uh, to help me in these moments? And one of the reasons why I'm putting you both on the spot because these questions and answers may, may help a future ally in training. So. Right. Yeah. No, I haven't been speaking very much at all. It's been a long week, and I am exhausted. But um, yeah. So I think the most interesting thing to bring up is the fact that Greg and I have literally met in person one time, and reacting to anybody over Zoom and over like virtual platforms is is strange and weird and like you know, your screen freezes up or you're looking off in the different direction. And so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a hard thing to, to say, like, how, how do I react when someone's having a, a moment of disfluency um, or some struggles? Um, because it's, it's on Zoom. It's hard. They can't, it, it, it's hard to read each other. So it's, it's very strange. And most of my exposure to people who stutter has been through a screen, which is, Again, difficult, but that's also the world we're living in now. So, you know, getting used to being able to, you know, how can you look like you're listening and be receptive when you're on a screen is a very important skill that I think everybody needs to be acquiring right now. Um, but in terms of just kind of my comfort level, it's definitely um, improved. I would say I'm not overly comfortable with people I don't know anyway. So when I first met Greg back like a year ago and started this podcast, it was like the added layer of I wasn't sure. I wanted to be respectful, and but I didn't know how because I had not really spoken with many people who said in my life at that point. Um, and that on top of Greg being a stranger to me, I was like, what am I doing? But I've definitely, I've definitely kind of figured out as time went on, you know, how to react to people who stutter and what to do and just to, you know, be there and be myself and just have a conversation just like anybody else. Um, and so it's definitely gotten, I've become a lot more comfortable both with Greg and any person who stutters who comes on the podcast and just strangers in general because that has you know the exposure to just random strangers I've never met on the podcast has been very helpful for me <laughs> um so I think that's the biggest thing and another thing is now that I know Greg I can sometimes tell when typically like if we have a guest that he has never met um sometimes I can I can tell when there's a few more you know periods of of difficulty and stuff like that, just because I, I've, you know, done enough podcasts with him to, to be able to pick up on that. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I don't know if any of that actually made sense because my brain is kind of not working right now, <laughs> but, but that's, that's what I have to say. Oh, definitely. Yes, Dr. Caitlin. It all, 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 all made sense. It all made sense to me <laughs> for the record. <laughs> For sure. Um, for me, um, I guess after, and, and I did have the privilege of meeting with Greg for at least, a, well, almost a couple of years, I guess, Greg, before COVID shut us down. Um, and we've seen each other a couple of times in person over the last few years. So, um I'll be honest, um, in the early days, I probably noticed, and, and Greg is really the only person in my day-to-day -day life that I know personally, um, that I see on a regular basis, that is a person who stutters. So I'm going to use you as an example, Greg. <laughs> um in the early days, I would say that I tried to read the room a bit so that I could um, see what was acceptable, maybe, uh, in terms of how to react and um, trying not to, you know, 
over speak um, or talk over a person who stutters um, when they're when they're trying to get their words out. And that came that came to me, and I don't know, Greg, you might have a different opinion of me. I'm not sure, but I feel like that came to me pretty easily because I I've you know I grew up with um, I guess in a in a family where you you know respectfully um, offered somebody that amount of time to to speak or finish their sentences or what have you, whether whether they were an adult or a child, like it was just one of those things. So that part of things came easy. My level of comfort with it has certainly developed. <laughs> um, and it was more of, I guess, a situation of me feeling, um, I won't say badly, but maybe a little uncomfortable. Um, and it took a while for me to get comfortable. And now, to be honest, I barely even, I know Greg is stuttering sometimes, but I don't hear it anymore. You know, like it's, it's just, it's who Greg is. So I, it's, you know, I, I really don't, um, and even listening to the podcast and listening to some of your, some of your guests who are on, even though they're new to me, um, by the like, you know, five or 10 minute mark, I feel like I don't even hear the, hear the stutter anymore. Like I know it's there, but it's not the focal point. Their words are the focal point. That's what I'm interested in listening to. So, and, and I think that just comes from being comfortable and maybe it's not being comfortable. Maybe it's not being uncomfortable listening to somebody who stutters, right? I think that's a, that's a, the, there's a difference there, right? You're like for your body to not react with discomfort when you hear somebody who's stuttering, and I think that can only come from exposure, really. Um, so yeah, like I don't, I try not to. Um, I won't say think about it. In the early days, I tried not to react to it. I didn't want, I didn't want anybody to feel that I was reacting uncomfortably and therefore making somebody else uncomfortable, you know, but now I, I don't, I don't think I react at all anymore. I, I just, it's, um, again, it's about acceptance, right? It's about getting to know somebody for who they are. And once you do that, you accept them for, everything that they are right so well you know you know your you know your comfort levels with you know with me my periods of you know more you know more you know more disfluency and you you both answered quite well and you know because you know you know i'm just thinking about you know like uh those people who you know who are not familiar with a person who stutters. I mean, so so you often wonder. It's, it's obvious sometimes in 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 their behavior, facial expression, that there, there's a definite discomfort level here. And uh, so so when you know you know when a person is a an ally or even thinking about becoming an ally, ally this you know this you know this you know this can impact them as well and uh, so so as i was saying earlier andrew if, you know like i feel for a, a you know a, a for a person who who you know who is a non-stutter to to become a, a, you know, an, an ally this you know this you know this is a huge courageous step it really is because it, there's you know there's so much a, a education awareness you know that 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 need, uh, need uh, needs to be done you know and I think you know. I mean, you, you both made some really good points because I think the more people listen to to the various people, I guess, on our our, our podcast that 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 are that people who started, you know, they, you know, they get more uh, acclimatized. You know, I shouldn't say acclimatized. You know, they they learn more. They they learn more, and uh, so so that you know, so so there you know there's you know there's you know, there's an education 
uh, there, there, there's you know there's an awareness and there's you know there, you know there's you know, there's an acceptance of of just the way a person who stutters is you know yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and I I think I think too I kind of liken it I guess to you know when I was a child I very seldom saw um, any of my um, school age friends um, in a wheelchair or, um, you know, with a, a prosthetic or anything like that, right? Um, and now today, I have several friends who are either in a wheelchair or have, you know, a prosthetic um, arm or a leg or, you know, and once once you i think get past that physical difference um and the same thing with stuttering once you get to know somebody you no longer see that difference you know and like that's the world i want to live in i want to live in a world where people don't they don't see um our diff our physical differences as uh noticeable i guess you know and that they just see the individual because once you get to know somebody you know they are who they are and and everything else just kind of falls away so i don't know that's me i'm a bit of an idealist so Uh, you know, as as I mentioned earlier as well, that you know, people who who stutter, like you know, you know, read, you know, read, you know, read, you know, you know, read, you know, the you know, you know, the listeners' facial, you know, facial expressions, and 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 this is what I'm finding challenging as well, as Caitlin mentioned on Zoom, because all all you see is facial expressions. <laughs> And you know, depending on you know whether or not the person is you know, depending on one one how how a person is looking, it can throw a person who starts off a lot, you know. So so this is a challenge for people who start to sort of you know you know not you know not to read into too much on on a paper a person who starts a start a non person who starts facial expression. This is a challenge, you know. So you know, so Caitlin, do do you think we you know we you know we should do an episode, you know, just you know, just to get listeners' feedback on on their comfort level? I I think that you know that you know that that would be a good you know episode. Just have listeners respond, and just make comments, and then you know you and I can reply to it. What's your thought, Andrea? Oh, I'm all for it. I think that uh, I think that you know public engagement is the way to go. Um, I think, and I think that the more people feel engaged um, and feel that they um, that their that their opinion matters or that their uh, participation matters, then I think you will find it will be a snowball effect and then you'll get more people wanting to participate you know so it's uh again it's all about communication you know and trying to trying to get everybody to that same level of acceptance and unity and equanimity and another Brené Brown word by the way <laughs> um, yeah it's you know we're all just people at the end of the day, aren't we? <laughs> Regardless of what we look like or sound like. <laughs> well, and Andrew, you know, again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And you know, you you know, you you know, you you know, you are the, the, the definite ally for people who who stutter and and and. and, and 
and our families. And we, you know, we need many more allies like you. We really do. Very kind of you, Greg. I am thrilled. I feel like a little bit of a celebrity now after having been invited onto the podcast. Um, so thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I had a Thank lot of you. fun. It was great. It was great. <laughs>